Okay, good afternoon, students. My name is Dr. Gina, and uh, I've been with HS2 Academy uh, for 10 years, and I have been teaching the Motivation and Goals class in the summers for about half of those number of years. So uh, it's one of my favorite classes to teach because motivation is probably 50% of doing well academically. Uh, the other 50% is divided between uh, what you know and what you uh, are learning and the effort that you put into what you are learning. So uh, obviously I consider motivation very, very important. Okay, so let me get up our text here. I'm gonna share the text and uh, we'll, I welcome you all. So in order to begin our discussion about motivation, we're gonna read a story together. It's a story about Simon and his dream. You'll get a chance to see Simon live out his life in two different ways. It's kind of like a movie with two different endings, an alternative ending. Uh, these uh, two different ways will help you understand the curriculum that we have planned for today and for the weeks to come. So before we read, let's learn a few terms. Motivation is defined as the process that initiates, guides, and maintains goal-oriented behaviors. Motivation is what causes us to act. Some of us are motivated by fear. <laughs> Uh, especially when it comes to our schoolwork and grades, okay? We are afraid of our parents being angry. We are afraid of failing. Uh, but we're going to talk about other forms of motivation, like excitement, uh, ambition, uh, curiosity, okay? Curiosity can motivate you. The desire to know more about something can be a powerful motivation. There are two different types of motivation. Intrinsic motivation that comes from within a person. For example, if you are in this class because you have an interest in improving your motivation and goal setting abilities, that is intrinsic motivation. Okay, I think maybe someone just joined us. Anna, welcome. Extrinsic motivation is a type of motivation that comes from outside of a person. Uh, we're, we're very familiar with those parents, teachers, maybe even extended family members like aunts, uncles, grandparents. They have expectations, even siblings. Sometimes siblings will put pressure on us in, in one way or the other, direct or indirect pressure. A little bit of, sometimes there's a little bit of competition bet between siblings. Uh, and that can be extrinsic motivation. The most important thing to have, of course, is intrinsic motivation. Okay. Now, in your own words, explain intrinsic motivation. And you can also think about, in your own words, how you would explain extrinsic motivation. And we're going to read the story. Okay, now I need to try to move something out of the way. All right. Here's the story of Simon. <laughs> Simon had. Uh, had always dreamed of working with animals, so his middle school counselor suggested that he volunteer at an animal hospital during the spring, which he did. He was so excited to interact with animals and veterinarians every weekend because there was always something interesting happening in the office. His experience went so well that he decided a career as a veterinarian was ideal for him. Okay, that's awesome. He wants, he has a goal. On to the next paragraph. On a typical day, Simon went would go home after school and played video games or spent his afternoons at the park near his home. Let's see, I think I might have to uh, mute someone's microphone. I can't, it looks like everybody's microphones are muted. 
but uh, we hear some talking in the background, but we'll go on. He was always available when any of his friends wanted to come over, and if he wasn't spending time with them, he was reading their status updates on Facebook. He really enjoyed feeling connected to others all the time, and, or just having the type of fun he used to have in elementary school. Okay, we've got some interesting concepts going on here. Feeling connected to others all the time, going home and playing video games, always available when his friends yeah. wanted to come over. Okay, these are some red flags. Unfortunately, his habits affected his grades. He often struggled to do his homework and only did it to avoid it. it by his parents. Let's see. Uh, it sounds like uh, we need to mute someone's microphone, but it looks like everybody is muted. I can't see what where the problem is. Uh, okay. So anyway. Uh, so uh, he found it especially difficult to study daily, even though he knew that cramming for tests was a bad idea. His grades were low, not surprisingly, but he didn't want to talk about that since his parents would lecture him. He really wanted them to be proud of him like they were proud of his big sister, but he felt like he had disappointed them and it was too late to make up for it. So he buried his head in the sand, avoiding communication with anyone who brought up his grades. He wouldn't even talk to his big sister because she always asked him about his homework. So he's just avoiding the situation. That usually makes things worse. So it shocked everyone when Simon talked about becoming a veterinarian at the dinner table that evening. His face contorted in a way that nearly scared his mother and made his father laugh out loud. His bright brown eyes grew wider and wider as he shared the story of how Dr. Schatzberger saved a Siberian Husky named Mikey, who was bitten by a rattlesnake. The owner brought Mikey in along with the rattlesnake, holy smokes, which he caught just in case the veterinarian needed to know what type of antivenom to use. Simon t told them that there are two types of antivenom, mon monovalent and polyvalent. Monovalent works against one type of venom and polyvalent works against many types of venom. He said, hmm, let's see how I can get this out of the way. He said, that Mikey's owner was worried that Dr. Schatzberger didn't carry the type that could save his dog's life. But luckily he had polyvalent and it worked against rattlesnake bites. So he quickly injected it into Mikey who immediately began to recover. Simon was so proud of himself because he could share specialized information that no one else in his family knew. Simon's parents were so happy. They'd always wanted to see this side of him. It wasn't until Mikey took the first step to volunteer at the well, I think Mikey was the name of the dog. Yeah, I think a Simon is our person. That Simon took the first step to volunteer at the pet hospital, that things started changing. Now, all of a sudden, they saw a wonderful spark in him that lit up his face in the entire room. Everyone was thrilled with the story and wanted to know more. Simon used to think that there was no hope for making his family proud, but now he had a dream. He wasn't just thinking about making them proud. He was motivated by his interest. Okay, that is um, intrinsic motivation. He was motivated by his own interest. Uh, so now we're talking, uh, it says Mikey, but actually our person's name is Simon. Simon started to read books about animals, focusing on dogs and horses. He also began looking up the anatomy of these animals. He spent hours online researching disease that affects dogs and the, uh, the latest treatments. What concerned his parents was that Simon was staying up too late and his grades didn't change. They worried that if Simon didn't learn some discipline and direct his energies toward his dream, it would be nothing but a fantasy. When Simon entered the ninth grade and earned grade point average of 2.5 in his first semester, his parents met with his counselor. 
In discussing Simon's dreams with his counselor, Simon's parents came to the conclusion that they needed to set a goal for him so he could keep his dream alive. They decided that a good place to begin would be to encourage him to raise his grade point average to 3.0, the minimum required to be accepted into the University of California system. Simon's parents didn't know how to bring up the subject. They knew that Simon might react negatively to new boundaries and expectations. Nevertheless, they called him over and Simon sat with them at the kitchen table. Simon, your father and I would like to talk to you about your grades, said his mom. Simon gave a great big sigh and put his head down on the table. His father decided to ignore his behavior and kept talking. In talking to your counselor, we found out that your grade point average could drastically reduce your chances of getting into schools with the best programs to prepare you for veterinary school. We want you to consider putting your volunteering on pause for now until you raise your grades. Now Simon really wanted to continue volunteering at the pet hospital. This had become the only activity that made him happy. So uh, the question now is what do you think Simon did? Let me make sure that there's nothing below there, correct. What do you think Simon did? Okay, here's ending one. We all suffer from one of two pains, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Jim Rohn said that. So Simon lifted his head up from the table and looked very angry. He blamed his parents for keeping him from the activity that made him happy. He said, why are you ruining this for me? Why do you hate me? Simon's parents were hurt and felt sad for Simon. They wished that they had conveyed their message in a clearer way or asked Simon to create a plan for them. But Simon's grandparents never asked his parents what they wanted. So his parents had a difficult time knowing how to approach him. When they tried to go back and talk to Simon, he wouldn't open his, the door of his room. After that day, Simon communicated with his parents less and less. Because Simon took their, uh, took their approach negatively, instead of seeing it as an opportunity, he lost a compelling vision of the future. Instead of waking up in the morning with energy and a smile, he started to lash out at everyone. His friends started to talk to him less and less because he wasn't nice to them anymore. What made him feel worse was that every time he passed by the pet hospital, it was a reminder that he had let his dream slip out of his hands. This is because his parents had insisted that he stop volunteering in order to get his grades up. That sounds like extrinsic motivation, not intrinsic motivation. And so now it's having a negative effect on Simon. By the time 11th grade came around, he didn't have it down in the dumps for too long. He tried joining clubs and started volunteering, building houses. He finally decided to raise his grades, but nothing made him as happy as he was in the spring of eighth grade when he had been volunteering at the animal hospital. He saw his friends applying for college and felt that he had, a, he had very few options when it came to schools and majors. He went to his local university and majored in a subject that he didn't enjoy and was easy to get into. So now he's just kind of compromising, just doing things that he doesn't even want to do, things that he's not interested in. Simon found a job working at a pet store as a manager. His days were filled with making sure that employees were coming to work on time, enjoying the correct, sorry, ordering the correct inventory, stocking the shelves correctly and reporting any issues to the corporate office. Doesn't sound like he gets to work with animals very much. So this is what his compromising has led him to. Uh, other people in his position enjoyed it. They really liked supervising people and had a talent for making things run e efficiently. Some managers came up with new ideas all the time and were recognized for their efforts and advanced quickly. Simon never went out of his way to do something different. He still dreamed of working to save the lives of animals he loved so much. On occasion, the people who worked at the pet hospital walked in and saw him. Simon would say hi to them with a sad look in his eyes, not even close to the wide, bright-eyed look he gave his mother when talking about Mikey and the rattlesnake bite. Okay, that's ending number one. 
Let's see if we can see ending number two. Okay. You must do the things you think you cannot do. That's a saying from Maya Angelou. Ending number two. Simon lifted his head up from the table after his parents had been talking to him. He took a deep breath and said, I don't understand why I need to stop volunteering. Simon said his dad, we want to teach you that in life you need to earn many things and your dream will be one of them. Simon felt like crying. He wanted to storm off to his room, but he was thinking of what he could promise to get out of, of this. He wished his parents would give him other options. In that moment, Simon recalled a quote that Dr. Schatzberger had in a frame in his office. It was, you must do the things you think you cannot do by Eleanor Roosevelt. Maybe he didn't really believe that he could do it, but now his parents were showing him that they believed in him. The fact that they were pushing meant that they thought he could do it. He talked to Dr. Schatzberger about putting volunteering on pause until he could raise his grade point average. Dr. Schatzberger said it was a good idea and invited Simon to have dinner with him every Saturday to talk about making his dreams come true. Then Simon did something he thought he would never do. He met with his counselor to find out what he needed to, to meet his A through G requirements and improve overall. His counselor gave him assignments, which Simon always completed on time. Simon's friends missed him, so they started asking him what was going on. Simon told them all about his dream. One set, friend said, wow, that's so cool. Maybe I can come over and study with you. My mom wants me to get my grades up too. His name was Samuel and he became Mikey uh, Simon's best friend. When it came time to apply for college, Simon had a grade point average of 4.4, 10 advanced placement classes, and an SAT of 2,350. He was accepted to Brown University with a major in biology. Then he went on to veterinary school at the best veterinary program in the country at the University of California, Davis. Today, he works alongside his proud mentor, Dr. Schatzberger, saving the lives of animals every day. Dr. Schatzberger gets a laugh out of watching Simon's bright brown eyes grow wider and wider with every new bit of interesting information. So obviously these are two different endings to the story, but really there's two different middles to this story as well. The difference is how Mikey and how his, I'm sorry, not Mike, he's Simon, and his parents handled that talk around the dinner table. Uh, here's some questions for us. Uh, I'd like you to jot down your answers on a piece of paper, and I think I can unmute the microphones to hear our responses. What is Simon like in middle school? That's when he started volunteering at the veterinary school. What is important to him and what are his desires? What does Simon do? Why does Simon do his homework in the beginning of the story? And what type of motivation is that? Who suggests that Simon volunteer at an animal hospital and why? Hmm, I have to look back. What is Simon's big dream? Before his parents intervened, what is Simon doing? to go after his dream before his parents sat him down at the table and said that he needs to make a decision about volunteering. What was Simon doing to go after his dream? And how do Simon's parents feel about how he is supposedly going after his dream? I think I'm gonna give us a, a minute or two to come up with a short little answers for these, but I think we should look back at the story to, add, to find out who suggested that Simon volunteer at the animal hospital. Who first suggested that? Okay. I hope you guys saw it. I saw it.
Let's see if you can remember. Okay, so in a couple minutes, I'm gonna try to call on different people to see if you can give me, uh, give us all a short answer. So I'm going to give us a minute to think about these answers. About 10 more seconds. I'm gonna have you guys tell us what you think about Simon. Simon, before his parents sat him down at the table. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of go in a random order here. I'm coming to your microphone. Hmm. Okay, Anna, what do you think Simon is like in middle school and what is important to him and what are his desires? Um, I think in middle school he really enjoyed being a, like a volunteer with pets, volunteering with pets, and he wanted to major in veteran and like during his like the first ending, it wasn't the best ending. Uh, this is true. Um, uh, we're, the, the two endings come after uh, his parents sit him down at the, at the dinner table. Oh, and then yeah. we have uh, that decision. But let me ask you this. Um, are you familiar with the word responsible? Yeah. And irresponsible. Yes. Where do you think our friend Simon falls? At the beginning, when he's in middle school. Irresponsible. Irresponsible. Can you name one thing that he does that's a little bit irresponsible, especially considering he wants to go to medical school. You have to go to veterinary school to become a veterinarian. I mean, it's pretty much the same as um, medical school. I think it's four years, just like medical school. So that, that's a big ambition. All ambitions are big ambitions, but uh, considering that ambition, name one thing that Simon did that was irresponsible. He pretty much had a fixed mindset that led him to basically lack off. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I'm gonna name something else that he did. Okay, and I'm gonna put you back on mute for a moment so I can see if I can hear from a couple other people uh, before we run out of time for today. Uh, Alex, choose a question and give us a response. Tell us something about what's he like in middle school, why does Simon do his homework in the beginning? Who suggested Simon volunteer? What is Simon's big dream? Uh, and before his parents intervene, what is Simon doing to go after his dream? Or how do Simon's parents feel about what he's trying to do to go after, or not doing, to go after his dream? You can choose which question. Mulin. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yes. Hi. Which question would you like to answer or, or give commentary about? Um, I can say what Simon's big dream is. Okay, what is it? Um, so Simon's big dream after volunteering at the veterinary hospital is to work towards becoming a veterinarian himself. Okay, and uh, so that's his spark, isn't it? Yeah. But does his spark motivate him to do work in, uh, in the beginning? No, in the beginning he sort of just thinks that um, he can just continue with volunteering and he can still continue to slack off with work. We have a name for that, it's called magical thinking. 
you know, it's like, oh, I want this, and it's just going to pop into my life. Um, yeah, that, that pretty much says it all. Magical thinking. Um, um, also, also, some people are answering the questions in the chat because they don't oh, have a mic, so they're answering it in the chat. Oh, okay. Now, let me see if I can find a way to, to read what they're typing. Okay, but folks, you know what? Um, we have three minutes, and I'm going to see if I can find that chat box, but I want to say that I'm very happy that we're all here together, um, and I look forward to us continuing to talk about motivation. Uh, like I said, um, I think that motivation is 50% of anybody's performance, whether it's on a test, your everyday academics, or your job, okay? Um, so uh, I'll be happy to talk about what motivated me to go through 18 years of college <laughs> um, and what motivates me every day to work with students. I've been teaching since 1991, at least teaching academics since 1991. And uh, hopefully we will continue to share our ideas and learn more about motivation. Um, I am going to see everybody's chats once I figure out how to minimize this window so that I can do that. Let's see, uh, minimize the window. Let's see if I can see the chats. But if not, students, we are at our last minute. We will meet here again, same time, same place. Uh, we will work on working out the bugs in this new system here. And uh, if you don't have a mic, that's fine. I'm hoping uh, you'll be able to write down your answers. Uh, and there, there may be more writing uh, in this course. You may want to get a notebook for writing down the goals and keeping them from one week to the next, as well as from one year to the next. Okay, a binder or a notebook. Okay, students, I am going to uh, sign off now and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. See you soon.